Hey there guys, this is Roman Running here, and in this battle, I'll be showing you the effectiveness of a Roman skirmish army, and a skirmish army in general. My army consists of six gold, gold archers, two archer auxilla, gold attack, an upgraded unit of triarii, three urban cohorts, only bronze bronze, and in the back I have my cav here, four of which are praetorians, with gold attack, silver defense, and the same upgrades for my legionary calf. <laughs> Over here my opponent is playing as Macedon, and he does have a disadvantage being that Macedon is just uh, known to be countered by Rome. But in this battle in particular, I told my opponent I would be going skirmish heavy, and he told me he would be going light on skirmish. The reason being that we wanted to see if he could beat my skirmish with his, with his four archers. It may sound a bit crazy, you know, um, his, his comment, but of course he didn't plan to do it with just his archers alone. And he does have a good point, in a lot of battles if you can manage to take your cav and rake the front line of their archers and just disintegrate them, it usually does work. And I have the battle going fast here because the early stages of this battle are much like a dance, you could say. We mirror each other's moves and we exchange fire. And for me, and anyone playing a skirmish army such as my own here, you want to do just that. It takes a lot of patience to use skirmish and it takes a lot of patience to also combat it. Because yes, rushing is a viable tactic to use against someone who has far more archers than you. You have to make sure you don't throw yourself into a bad position. If you rush forward here and allow a full surround, you'll easily lose and you'll have a mass route of your army. But while the battle's in the early phases here, um, he does have four gold gold archers. He has six royal pikemen, fully upgraded. And he has five companion cavalry, four of which are silver, silver upgrades. And two, um, excuse me there, one of which is bronze, bronze. And as you can see here, I see him pulling up his cavalry. Now, he's not going to be able to reach these archers and kill them, but it's just more of a taunting gesture. I have my triarii right here to help kind of block with spears, and then my cab to flank. A lot of the movements we make here are just threatening and imposing, but don't do much of anything. And that's a lot of what these battles are and will consist of. As you can see, I keep doing retreats, and I'll fire. And here I fake an attack. I'm actually hoping to hit him and nearly clip him. But it goes in my disfavor and he does a smart move here. Targeting the backs of my horsemen. He drops about five or so of them. And it's always good to switch targets. If you're ever using archers and they make a charge with their cav, make sure to return the fire. Because if they do no damage with their cavalry, and especially if it's light cav, half the time can you obliterate that unit with just all the sheer magnitude of power your archers have. Of course these guys I've whittled them down to little to nothing here, their strongest unit being 24 men. And as you can see here he got within range of my archers and I repaid the favor. Ah oh, yes. Vengeance is sweet isn't it? And here's a bit more skirmishing and I know this, these kind of battles can be a bit boring but to play them takes a lot of thought and micromanagement, especially what I, what I like to do, and I'm sure a lot of people do this as well, is I take my archers off of skirmish and I take them off of fire at will. And a lot of good players do that because they'll take their units and have them attack the backs of the, their opponent's infantry as they turn away. Because once the archers become low in numbers, such as you see here, most of them are 10 and 7 and 12, Mass targeting with your archers on a 14-man unit isn't a smart idea. The most men you could kill is 14. Whereas, if you target a unit of 57, theoretically speaking, you could kill 57. Now, that won't happen, but your arrows will hit more targets, and thus are more likely to cause more casualties. So never, never target your archers on the small units. If there's you know a few archers left in your opponent's uh, arsenal, Forget about them, they're not going to do much damage. If they kill one or two minutes, it's not going to affect the overall course of the battle. You're going to want to take your archers and aim at the bigger bodies. Now at this point, he moved his cavalry to this flank, and he's bringing his pikemen over 
so I did not want to engage. So I do a mirror move here with my Chiarii in front of my Cav to help combat this, as well as keeping my Urbans close just in case an engagement does happen. All the while I can safely move my archers to his flank to take rear shots and side shots against his pikemen. There's no point in ever firing at the front of a unit, especially a heavily upgraded one such as this. And even more so if you're facing Urbans, because if you look at these shields, <laughs> arrows are not going to do much damage to them. Now maybe in the real world, the arrows could indeed pierce through the shield, and they actually have. That's not going to happen on this game. This game has different ways of working. And while you can get a few kills on them, let's say if I were to take all these archers here and fire at my urbans, I'd get one kill. That's not worth doing. And I'd much rather maneuver my archers to get flanking shots. Which is what I'm doing here. Being that my opponent also brought a small amount of archers, he cannot control the battlefield. And I always like to reiterate to players that archers are what control the course of the battle. If you camp a hill and have no archers, why in the world should someone charge you? But if you sit on top of that hill and you're raining down fire and flame and arrows upon your opponent, they're going to want to charge you or at least back away. And that's what you have to always keep in mind in a battle. Sometimes, too, if you're not really into archers, you can invest a small amount of money into them, and your opponent may think, oh, he's shooting me with archers, I need to act quickly, before even looking at the upgrades and the amount of damage that they're causing. Now here my opponent decides to turn and actually charge into me. You'll see that momentarily here. And I'd like to make a point with this, and that is that your own phalanx can kill your men. If you see here... Boom, they're all dying. And a lot of people ask this question, do phalanxes cause you know, casualties to your own men? Is there friendly fire? And I think this answers our question that yes, there is friendly fire. And while his charge did manage to take out a half of my urban cohort here, it brought them from 40, 41, where are they? 41 to 20 men. And it even hurt my other cohort too. No, it didn't, just one it caused him significant casualties to his cavalry. And in these kind of fights, especially when you're fighting, you know, a skirmish battle, you want to have that movement. Because I can always outrun these pikemen with my archers. Always. So his cav has been halved, almost. 16 from 27, not quite half. 11 from 27, that is more than half. And I'm not going to uh, list off all of them, but I'll let you guys just kind of look. And if you're wondering what I'm doing here, I did try to take some shots with my Pila, but he caught me with that, and only one unit managed to throw off some Pila, and I think it caused minimal casualties since it was head on. And these shields are rather small, but when they're down in Phalanx, they do give them a bonus, and they also have heavy upgrades. So I'm going to keep up my strategy now, as you can see, he's closing the gaps, and I'm just taking my archers and completely demolishing these units with heavy fire from all angles. I really like the look of that, just ar arrows firing here and there. It's really crazy. And of course in a real battle, I don't know what you would do to deal with it. That's just insanity. I guess you just get, you know, boom, headshot, hey, bye, plop down. And he's starting to reform against me, and now I'm trying to stop my shots as much. When I see him walk a unit like this, I just completely annihilate him. And looking at his unit counts, I've done quite a bit of damage. One thing too, is I never march your men like that slowly. You want to lift up their spears, take them out of phalanx and charge. All you have to do for a quick phalanx charge is select your units and either group them or alt click them. And they'll maintain their formation and you can hold space to see where they'll run to. And once they close in on your enemies, you just hit F, which is any unit special attack, and they'll drop their spears, backspace, and stop. And if timed properly, you can do that right in front of your enemy's units, and it's pretty much a phalanx charge. I mean, actually it is a phalanx charge. Here though, he is doing good work with boxing around my men, but I'm not going to fight him like that. And a phalanx does work, work best when you have spears coming from all angles. But whenever you're fighting someone like Rome, the phalanx just kind of fails. That's why it's always best to bring nations that are heavy into chariots 
or have cataphracts. Now if you're playing Seleucids, I'd recommend about four Scythe Chariots and never upgrade your Scythe Chariots. There's no point in doing that. No point at all, because they will run amok. And then bring two Cataphracts, heavily upgraded, and you will steamroll your opponent. As for your Skirmish component and your Infantry component, that's up to you. Me personally, when I'm playing Seleucids against Rome, I'll bring about six Gold Gold Archers and two Militia Cav, fully upgraded, just to kind of confuse my opponent. And then I'll bring about three to four Silver Shield Pikemen. And Pikemen simply to hold. And I'll make sure I can hold my Roman opponent with my Pikemen. As you can see here though, he's inching forward. And my men see him from a mile away. So these archers are just going to pull back. And I'm, you know, I'm slowly pulling them back. And each and every time he marches forward like this, I get more and more kills. Thus giving me the advantage. And... As stated earlier, I've just ignored these guys. They haven't done much. I mean, nobody even cares about these guys. Uh, I do like their hats. I really like those little... Those little... Some, it's not a sombrero. Oh, jeez. So here he's going for the same move he did earlier. He's going to hit this urban cohort right here. And of course, being 14 men hit by all that cav, they're going to rout. He does manage to rake up against my calf here, but they manage to get a half surround on him. And I'm just plowing into him from this angle. And I'm going to take him to sweep around here and completely encircle him. Now, if he hadn't have thrown away his calf in that initial charge to take out one unit of my urbans, he probably could have held much longer with his cavalry, and thus wouldn't have me be able to freely roam and have to run his men out. He would be in the pursuing position right now. But simply... Simple mistakes such as that can really cause a huge problem in the battle. Now this was a good charge. I did try to counter charge. But as you can see, the feet... Oh, they're coming back. I did take my Atrarier and try to cut off his general here. When a pikeman charges into cavalry without their spears and just their short swords, which look honestly similar to the Gladys, which is the Roman sword, of course, it would have been inferior to the uh, Urban Cohort's Gladys. Even though in this game they look much, you know, quite a bit alike. But a Gladys, or a Short Sword, which the Royal Pikes carry, does not give a bonus against Cavalry. It's only these Spears that do that. So keep that in mind. It is daring, and it, but it is possible to charge into a unit of Pikemen when they have their Spears up and kill them with a Cavalry. And here I saw this unit away from his main body over here, so I isolated it and I took it out quickly. While he did have a disadvantage, I don't want his forces uniting, because there is always that chance that they could muster up together and beat me. But looking at the battle now, I do have a good advantage. And huh, that kind of looks like a castle in the background, doesn't it? If only, if only... Well, you guys can see where the battle's going now. I'll get some good action here. Suicide charge. Always cool to do that, you know. Especially if you're a man to tell the tale. You know, sitting there with the beer. You know, sitting there with the beer in your hand at the bar. Yeah. Back in the wars against the Macedonians, I charged headlong into a phalanx and won. I killed many men. Yeah, that's always cool. Look at these guys. Jump in. Killing people. Brave men. And look at this general too. He has lasted quite a long time, especially with all this chaos around. And he's trying to get the heck out of here now. Now, uh, I will reiterate a point here. If I didn't go heavy skirmish and I brought heavy infantry, as well as heavy cav with a moderate, small to moderate amount of archers, this would have been an easy win. All you'd have to do is charge forth with your urbans, fire a volley of pila, get this around, and then obliterate their cavalry with your forces. Battle won. But being that I told my opponent beforehand I would show him the power of a skirmish army, indeed I did. And the thing about these kind of skirmish armies is they can beat most factions except chariot heavy nations. And the key is if your cavalry is inferior, then you cannot do this. It has to be of equal strength or superior strength to do a strategy such as this. 
Good game to my opponent though. Interesting battle, fun battle, a bit boring at times, but indeed did I enjoy it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll be sure to keep this up. Take care.